Hey there everyone, Pally here, and welcome back. It's time for another Star Citizen video. In fact, this is going to be part one of a two-part series I'm going to put together. Uh, today, I'm going to look back at Star Citizen, the development up to this point, primarily focusing on 2016, expectations versus what we got, uh, how I think the game is currently sitting in its present-day state, uh, and then we're going to look forward next time, next video, into 2017 expectations, what I feel they need to do, need to show us, uh, and how I think the game is going to progress through the next year or so. Uh, so with that out of the way, let's go ahead and let's start off. We're going to be looking back today, like I said, at 2016. I think in terms of 2016, when it all is said and done, it's going to be very forgettable. There were quite a few important features added into the game, but there wasn't a lot of content development for us to mess around with, for us to really bite our teeth into. There were some key elements. 2.0 was 2015. That was towards the end of 2015, if I recall correctly, and that was a big step up. That was the first time we were able to move beyond the hangars and start spawning at Port Olisar, getting out there into the universe and flying around. 2.5. Four, five, and six were all in 2016, and I might get these confused. If I remember correctly, 2.4 was the multi-crew ships. 2.5 was mostly performance issues, balancing passes, getting the netcode working a bit better, though it wasn't the final netcode pass. Uh, and then 2.6 was obviously Star Marine, the new uh, item system, and then some of the, the new systems in terms of um, the flight mechanics and all of that. 2.4, 2.5, I might have those mixed up, uh, but it doesn't really matter. If we look at it, uh, one of the terms I've come to when trying to record these videos is feature strong, but content light, or, or heavy in features, light in content, however you actually want to put it. What we saw in 2016 was a lot of the tools and the mechanics being implemented that are very important to the final product, but we didn't get a whole lot of content to actually do with those. You know, Coming out and getting into Port Olisar back in 2.0 in 2015 was a big step up. It was the first time you could really see, all right, I'm kind of starting to see what it is they're trying to do. I mean, we understand the vision he's after, but I can see it mechanically starting coming together. Being able to do this in 2.4 with different people in your ship, friends in your ships, was really important. And that's a super important part of the game. The Star Citizen, the game they've promised us, doesn't work if I can't have my friend running around in the engine room while I'm flying along in space. It just, it doesn't work with what they've promised. And we got to see that actually working in 2.4. That, in terms of features, is super important. In terms of actual content it gave us, it did give us some content. You could go out and get into trouble in ways you could not before with multi-crew ships, but it didn't really add a huge amount of content in that terms. You could spend five, six, eight hours, some people maybe 10 or 12 hours, but it wasn't like a game that you'd be coming back to 10 hours a week for weeks on end before you'd run out of things to do. That is what I mean there. Uh, 2.5 again wasn't really content heavy, it refined a lot of systems, and then 2.6 in terms of features was super important again. We got the Star Marine, we got the inventory, or not inventory, but the new item system, and a lot of changes to the flight mechanics and everything, and all of that again is really important for the progress of the game. In fact, it leaves me when I look at like the systems that are needed. There are a lot of them, but there's several really key important systems that needed to make the game work. And these are gonna be different depending on who you are, what it is you're looking for, but I would say like, First thing, the first system needed to be able to fly a spaceship. That is in, that is working. The second thing needed to be able to fly the spaceship in a universe with other players and everything, jump around to different locations, and that is mostly working. You know, we have upwards of, what is it, 24 players uh, in Olasar. We have upwards of however many players in Arena Commander and stuff. There, that's coming along. We can mostly see that working. Number three was the multi-crew ships. That, again, is, for the most part, working in place. Uh, the next thing was being able to, like, the, the star marine point. Uh, the fifth part, then, for me, is going to be, like, the planetary landing. So, at this point, when we take everything else, put it together with the planetary landings, we're then able to go down, you know, you, you spawn your ship somewhere, pick up a friend, go down to a planet, pick up some cargo, fly to a different moon, sell it, make some money, get into some trouble on the line. Uh, so the planetary landings for me is like the fifth major element. And then the sixth big element, key component mechanic they need to have working is inter 
galactic travel, jumping from solar system to solar system, uh, and that will come in 4.0. So out of like the six major components that we need to see, we now have four of them in place, and we've seen the fifth one in action in different videos we've seen from CIG, uh, in pr particular the CitizenCon videos and things along those lines. So yeah, 2016, we saw a lot of the tools, a lot of the components coming together. We unfortunately just didn't get a whole lot of content to really try them out. And I think your takeaway on this, in the end, it's going to be forgettable. Everyone's, when the game finally does start to come together, and if it's even remotely good, people will focus on that game, what was there, and they'll forget the years of waiting up to that game for the most part. However, they're, like at this point in time, it's really going to come down to who you are and your personality, your aspect when you went into the game. If you were somebody that back at the end of the Kickstarter gave in money and you felt you were buying a game, though you might have to wait three, four, five years for it, you're probably really disappointed in the current state of the game. You don't have a whole lot to play. There's a lot of little things you can, you know, mess with, but there's no substantial game there with you. However, like if you're more like me, when I went to the Kickstarter and watched the original video, I want to build you a universe and all of that, I came away from it saying, this is going to take eight years, maybe more, at least, at least six years, probably eight years for them to produce it. So being four years in now and watching and seeing how most of the tools are implemented, seeing how it's starting to come together, it's kind of right in that point of where I expected it to be. I do feel it's a bit delayed beyond where it where it was expected, but it's not to the point where I am worried about how much delayed it has become. Uh, there are concerns with how they constantly want to recreate the wheel, though I understand why they're doing it. Things like using the, what is it, the unified animation rig or whatever, where it's just one animation thing, which very few games have done before because it's a real headache to do. I understand why they're doing it. I just don't know if it's actually worth the amount of effort they're putting into it. If Call of Duty, which is focused primarily, almost entirely around multiplayer shooting, finds that two different animation sets, one for the player, one for the opponent, works well enough for them, I'm not sure why it wouldn't have worked well enough for Star Citizen. You know, does it really matter if when I'm interacting with another player, if on my screen he's looking at a 45 degree angle, but on his screen he's looking at a 47 degree angle and maybe his arm's down a little bit more than that? Not really, it's not a huge deal. As long as you're not getting into the point where I come around a corner and on my screen he's looking one way and on his screen he's looking directly at me, then, then it's a problem. But that's normally a latency thing, not an animation sync type thing. So I'm not entirely sure on all of these systems they've rebuilt, though I do understand why it is they're doing it. And in the long run, for say the next 10 years of content development updates, it's probably for the best. But if you're someone that once the game right now, you see all these re-rolls and remakes and constantly redoing the wheel, it's probably quite frustrating to you. You might feel like you got gypped off, and it's an understandable sentiment. Uh, we should not dismiss people that are in those lines, uh, people that are thinking that, because they're going to be the ones that we want playing this game also. So it's, it's both. It just really comes down to the mentality of what you went in with your expectations and optimist versus pessimist. It's funny, because I'm actually kind of a pessimistic person. Uh, more recently, 2.6. Thoughts on 2.6. I think 2.6, again, I'm going to go back to what I was saying earlier. Feature, f feature full, feature heavy, content light. Star Marine, I am very pleasantly surprised with. Uh, I do think there's some major problems. Not major. I do think there's some things they need to work out. Things like aiming down weapons, aiming down sights feels a little slow for my taste, though I did get used to it. I really like the vault animations. In general, I think they've done a great job of uh, the little things, like when you're vaulting over a wall or whatever, I think work really well. I like the fact that you can throw grenades overhand or underhand just by aiming above or below the center of your screen. I do wish there was a little more of a clear way to tell how you were going to throw the grenade because sometimes you're kind of aiming at about waist level and it's hard to tell well am I above or below that center uh, I think uh, just a little indicator something on the screen with maybe a little uptick arrow or a downtick arrow just to show you that before you throw the grenade would be nice or perhaps when you're holding G before you let go of G and the grenade's thrown if you hit G and then move the mouse up it'll go overhand if you hit G and then move the mouse down a little bit it'll go underhand it would maybe also be another uh, cool way to do it um 
I really appreciate the levels that they've designed. There are only two of them. But in terms of great arena-based multiplayer shooter level design, this is up there. Uh, it's got some of the quality terms of game quality design of things I'd look back to like Counter-Strike, Unreal Tournament, uh, original Call of Duty Modern Warfare, the first Modern Warfare game. Uh, very good two and three lane design that does a great job of having enough line of sights, enough flanking routes that you don't get bogged down into uh, choke points, but at the same time not being so many that you're constantly being shot in the back from angles you don't expect. Uh, now this is helped a lot by uh, the radar system, which right now is brokenly OP. Uh, the person that watches the radar, once you've learned the maps, you can watch the radar and you pretty much know exactly where someone's coming. And you can just wait for them to walk around the corner and shoot them in the head. Uh, so the, the radar needs to be reworked, but that's coming in times. Uh, there needs to be something to identify grenades. Either the grenades themselves need to have a built-in like glow, like maybe when you activate them, like they uh, maybe start to burn a little bit, like an incinerary charge, so you can see the grenade fly through the air or an actual heads-up display for the grenade location being thrown. I kind of like the first idea better. I think that'd be more skillful. It's going to reward players that are more aware of their surroundings. Uh, you'd have to be more watching for that grenade to arc through the air and you see the actual glowing of it. Uh, it would also make for more strategy where if I'm behind you, chuck a grenade behind you, you're not going to see it unless you're really hearing it. I think that could be really cool. Though uh, a heads up display, just a grenade indicator would also work just fine. Plenty of games do that. Th that's one of the areas that they really need to work on. Um, yeah, overall I'm impressed with Star Marine. I think for a base alpha, it's really quite good. Uh, they definitely need to flesh it out some, uh, they need some different gadgets and everything, but we also have to keep in mind how much time and effort do we want them to put in the Star Marine. Uh, obviously it's a great testing bed for the other elements to go into the base game, the actual universe, but I don't want to see 15 maps in Star Marine in 9 different game modes. Uh, that's just a lot of wasted money and development time that could be going into something else. So while I would like to see it fleshed out, I also would like to not see it so fleshed out. I think it's kind of okay where it is. I don't know. It, can, it could go either way. I just don't want to see him wasting money on something that is a game within a game that once the actual game itself launches, no one's going to be playing that game within the game very often. Uh, the flight mechanics are something that's going to cause some concern, some talk, and we'll, we'll spend a little bit about this. Um, this is one of the ones that a lot of people were really split on. Actually, I don't even know if they were so much split. There were people that we're going to wait and see, and then there were people that this sounds like the worst idea ever to them. Uh, and if you don't know what they did, it was essentially they cut the speed, the combat speed, in half for all ships. So whereas before, the slowest ship was running at about 80, 85 meters per second, and the fastest ships were up around 300, 310 meters per second. Well now the slow ships are at like 40, 45 meters per second, and the top speed ships are like 175, 180, 200. Uh, what this done is it's really narrowed the window for where ships can be kind of unique. Before, a Sabre and a Gladius were notably faster than a Hornet. Now they're still faster, but before the difference was maybe 80 meters per second, now it's roughly 40 meters per second. So that difference has been halved. And it does mean that there's less uniqueness between the fast ships and the slow ships. They're not quite as unique as they used to be. And when you have 50 some ships layered within this window of combat speed, um, yeah, it does detract some things from it. But what I think people are missing is that's only the combat speeds. You still have your cruise speeds, your burst speeds, but it also, I would prefer a better combat simulator, something that is more fun in dogfighting, but maybe less unique over something that is more unique, but less fun to actually fly. Uh, and on that part, I think it actually has done a fairly good job of, of making the dog fighting a little more, I don't even want to just say manageable, because it's still, I think, very skill-based. But you're going to be running into ships and cr crashing off meteors and all of that a lot less often with the new speed changes. Uh, one of the other big complaints I see is people look at the, the flight system and they blame the current flight system flight mechanics for how 1v1 dogfights currently play out. And that tends to be the ships will close on each other, they add in some type of extra axis, so Y or Z, and so they're kind of circling around each other and whoever can keep their crosshairs on the other target and circle better 
normally wins the dogfight. And rather than seeing like these ace maneuvers like you would from Top Gun or something, where people are pulling U-turns and, and corkscrews and barrel rolls, it's just this circling and shooting at each other uh, as you, you add in extra direction. Here's the thing. That happens because that's how we're playing it. When you have a fight between two differently matched ships, so let's say a Gladius and a Freelancer, the Gladius determines how the fight is going to play out. The Freelancer can do nothing but really react. The Freelancer can't turn and run. He'll never get away from it. The Gladius is faster. The Freelancer can't outmaneuver it. So you, let's say you're the one in the Gladius, you determine, you set how that combat engagement is going to go. By coming in and circling around them, the only thing the Freelancer can really do is try and keep up with that circle. If you, on the other hand, though, break away and use your speed to come in for big, fast hit and runs, well, that changes how the gameplay plays out. That changes the combat. It's not the flight mechanic's fault that we're flying this way. Now, you could argue that it's the flight mechanics that make it the most efficient way, and that is somewhat true, but that's also the base of a Newtonian flight system. If we wanted to go with something more along Elite Dangerous or, say, a pure like avionics, uh, atmospheric-based flight system, yeah, you would have more of that in, but we'd have to give up the Newtonian flight system for that. And while that would definitely add in elements of loops and stuff, it also wouldn't make sense within the game because there's no st there's no stall speeds. So rather than being worried about your stall and everything, it's just however fast can I go and maintain my turn. I also think there's a mistake here where we're evaluating, again, the flight system now based off Arena Commander and a few 1v1s, 2v2s, 2v3s, in the small crusader universe you're not really seeing full engagements of larger fleets something with say let's say 40 players on each side so figure a few medium-sized ships with multiple people in it so 40 players say 20 ships or so on each side a fight like that is going to play out much differently with these exact same flight mechanics because if you're in that same gladius and you come in and you start trying to just circle around on a freelancer well that destroyer the Idris destroyer right there one of its turrets is going to look over at you and you're going to be going real slow and a very easy arc for them to shoot at and they're just going to wreck you or while you're doing that little corkscrew thing a saber is going to come flying in and just blow you out of the sky uh and the mechanics of that type of dogfight just don't work in a larger fleet action for the most part. Uh, you're going to see a lot more of ships jumping out and coming in on angles that are unexpected, or you're going to see a lot more of the medium ships, things like the Cutlass, uh, the Freelancer, even the Vanguard, pushing lines and stuff. And a Vanguard that has maybe a little saber on its tail isn't going to try and turn and chase that, van that saber. Instead, it's going to look for a target that's more designed for its opportunity, let its turret gunner let a wingman deal with it and continue flying on so when we actually see this combat playing out in a more realistic way then it's going to be different let's not judge where it is right now because of our limited sample set and that's basically 2016 uh, we've seen a lot of mechanics but not a huge amount of gameplay I, I do think it's in terms of key features being developed and readied for the game, I think it was actually a very important year. Uh, 2016 is going to be one of those years where they got a lot accomplished. There just wasn't a lot for us to play with what they got accomplished. Overall, I'm happy with the development of where it's at right now. I think it's coming along fairly well. I've been very impressed with the larger ships, the Freelancer, the Caterpillar, uh, the Vanguard. Those type of ships I really like. I think they've done some great job with them. Uh, I'm very happy with the 2.6 update as a whole. I fixed a lot of the little little issues I had problems with and, and I think I think we're set up for a pretty good 2017, but we'll get into that next time. Uh, until then though, this has been Power. Thanks for watching.